Greetings to you in the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Friends, I welcome you to our worship uh, service today. It is um, second Sunday in Advent, and we are following on the theme, preparing for the extraordinary, changing your mind. So for today, we are particularly fo focusing on changing your mind. So I welcome you to this um, act of worship. May we join our hearts, our minds, as we worship God together on this day of Second Advent for 2023. Please join me in worship. to you.
So friends, join me as we approach God um, in, our, in our prayers, and especially now as we uh, present the liturgy, the Advent liturgy for the second Sunday today. It is our tradition that we light candles each Sunday uh, of the Advent. But for today, the second Sunday, the Methodist Church family, we have agreed that we are not going to light the second um, candle for this year as we are in prayer and in solidarity with the situation and the conflict in Israel and Palestine. So for that reason, uh, the liturgy for this year is not going to have us or see us lighting the second candle of Advent. So that is something which we will need to uh, realize that we are going to skip for this year. So join me in this Advent liturgy, friends. Our Advent journey calls us on in preparation for what's to come. Our dusting off and getting ready, tweaking, changing what we do. Advent God, dust us off today. Because we've always done it, doesn't mean we always must. As our journey makes us think again and change the way we live. Advent God, dust us off today. The challenge is to learn what old ways should be no more, to encounter and experience and be brave in stepping out. Advent God, dust us off today. Amen. Shed for us his precious blood, who his love will not remember, who can cease to sing his praise, he will never be forgotten throughout heaven's eternity.
of crucifixion found his open deep and wide through the flood gates of God's mercy flowed a vast and gracious tide grace and love like mighty The beginning of the great message of Jesus, the Anointed One, the Son of God, as it has been written in the prophets. See, I am dispatching my messenger ahead of you, who will build your way before you. A voice of one imploring in the desolate places, prepare the way of the Lord. Make his paths straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And the people went out to him from the whole Judean countryside and from the city of Jerusalem. And he baptized them in the river Jordan as they confessed their sins. Now John was dressed in camel's hair. He had a great belt around his middle. He ate locusts and honey from the wild. He proclaimed, The one who is coming after me is more powerful than me. I'm not competent to stoop down and do the straps on his sandals. I dipped you in the water, but he will drench you in the Holy Spirit.
So today's message um, is centered on our theme, which is preparing for the extraordinary, changing your mind, changing your mind. <laughs> I wonder how many of us, you know, uh, willingly um, are prepared to change uh, their minds. Because a change of mind implies, you know, it, is, it takes a lot really. It requires a lot. It calls for a lot to happen in someone's life. Because a change of mind would imply, you know, a change of, you know, actions. The way you have um, done things before. So by changing one's mind, it means they are also prepared to change the way they are. They have always done things. So it's their actions, it's their attitudes, it's, you know, how they react to people, how they interact with uh, with other people, how they view other people. You know, it's to, it's, it's to do with some of these things. You know, that readiness, that preparedness. So I'm just saying, I wonder how many of us are, are really prepared and are willing to change mind. But that, that's the message for today. Because as we read from, uh, you know, uh, Mark's Gospel, chapter 1, where we read this morning, you know, John the Baptist is calling uh, for his audience. John the Baptist's message to his audience is a call to repentance. He is calling for his audience to repent. And um, some commentaries uh, you know, with regard to this word, repent. Some are of the opinion, actually they argue, and there's a debate around this word, repent, where some are actually saying, uh, you know, Mark did not use the word uh, repent as we understand it today. Some are, are, are of the opinion, are of the mind that, you know, the way Mark used this word, actually in Greek, it's metanoia, which means change your mind. So some are saying, Mark is simply talking about change your mind. But for me as a theologian, I also want to argue, you know, further on this to say, in, in, in all honesty and in theological sense, in theological terms, for me, I mean, John the Baptist was calling for a repentance. John the Baptist was calling for a, for repentance. That's my argument too. Yes, to say um, we should view and regard this in theological understanding to say here there is a call for repentance. The call is to a people who have disregarded, who have diso disobeyed, you know, God's will and God's ways. They have done their own things. They have neglected God's ways. They have been disobedient. So John the Baptist, for me, he wouldn't be talking lightly or simply uh, in that simplicity to say, change your mind. John the Baptist is calling for true repentance. What is repentance for that matter? What is repentance? Why should we avoid the word repent? Because for me, to repent is simply to take one to take ownership of their wrongdoings. It is to take ownership of one's wrongdoings. To say, I am wrong. I've been wrong in the way I've conducted myself. I've been wrong in the way I have done things. I've been wrong in the way I have interpre interpreted you know, certain things. So it's to take ownership of that you know, wrongdoing. And then it goes further to then say, I am sorry. It is to be sorrowful. It is to be remorse of any wrongdoing. So for me, that's repentance. That's repentance. So John the Baptist is calling for his audience to say, in every way, in any way that we have done wrong things, you know, against God, let us come. So repentance calls us to come back to God in humility and to say, we are sorry. That's repentance. 
But for the purpose of, you know, the theme for today, I, I still want to, I mean, I, I concur, yes, I concur to say it also has to do with that change of mind. A change of mind like we see in, in the parable of the prodigal son. This prodigal son who had gone very far away from home, having been far away from home, he wasted resources, he squandered, you know, his father's wealth. And at a certain point in time, he realized that what he had done was wrong. And he changed his mind. I like where he says, I will rise and go back to my father and say, Father, I have sinned against you. So it is that change of mind, that realization to say, what I have done, where I am, you know, the hate, the pain that I have caused in other people. It is that realization to say, I am, I am sorry. I have been wrong. So this young man, the prodigal son in the parable, then rises and he goes back home to be welcomed back into the family, to be embraced by his father. That is a change of mind. Friends, that is um, uh, what we are being called for today uh, in this gospel according to St. Mark in Advent 2. So in Advent 2, for us to be able to, to, to meet with, the, with, with Jesus Christ when he returns, we need to be prepared. That preparedness of a change of mind in the way we've acted before, if it has been wrong, if it has caused others pain and hurt, please, this message is calling us to change our minds, our actions, our behavior, our attitudes, even to change our perceptions about other people and about things in general. So this is the call for today. Friends, once we allow the Holy Spirit to do his work in our hearts, in our lives, you know, to bring that change, to bring that transformation, then we are actually formed into the image, into the likeness of Jesus Christ. So for me, the change of mind, it is to be, you know, that willingness to be changed into the likeness of Christ. For Paul says, it is no longer I who lives, but it is Christ who lives in me. Metanoia. So let's allow the, for the Holy Spirit to do his work of transformation, of renewal, of bringing new life, of bringing new energy into our lives. Friends, Jesus challenges us today to change our minds. I wonder, I wonder, do you find it easy or hard to change your mind? It might be hard, it's not easy, but just allow the Holy Spirit to do his work of transforming you inwardly and outwardly, to shape you into the image, into the likeness of Jesus Christ, changing your mind, to have that mind like Christ. Happy Advent and God bless you. Will you come and follow me if I but call your name? Will you go where you don't know and never be the same? Will you let my love be shown? Will you let my name be known? Will you let my life be grown in you and you in me? Will you leave yourself behind if I but call your name? Will you care for cruel and kind and never be the same? Will you risk the hostile stare should your life attract or scare? Will you let me answer prayer in you?
Will you let the blinded see if I but call your name? Will you set the prisoners free and never be the same? Will you kiss the leper clean and do such as this unseen and admit to what I mean in you and you in Will you love the you you hide if I but call your name? Will you quell the fear inside and never be the same? Will you use the faith you found to reshape the world around? Through my sight and touch and sound in you. Lord, your summons echoes true when you but call my name. Let me turn and follow you and never be the same. In your company I'll go where your love and footsteps show. Thus I'll move and live and grow in you.
Friends, it has been wonderful. It has been a pleasure to have you join me uh, in this worship for Advent 2 today. So now, um, as we come to close, we share in prayer and the blessing. Uh, let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for being with us at this time of worship. Lord, as we continue in this journey of Advent, especially for today. Help us, O oh Holy Spirit. Help us in those times and in those places 
where we need to review our ways, our actions, and our conduct. Holy Spirit, help us to be changed people. Transform us into the image of Jesus Christ, the Son of uh, the living God. Lord, we thank you that you are faithful. The more we learn, the more we change. The more we think, the more we grow. The more we dust our old ways off, the more our faith shines out. Advent God, dust us off today. Amen. Now may the grace of our living God, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forever. Amen.